three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Todd Brown, That Racing Show. Thanks for dropping by for this pit stop segment, the post Teledega episode. And man, do we have a lot to talk about today. I mean, the race in action, both days, Saturday and Sunday. Great door banging side by side action, some ridiculous finishes out there. And uh, man, I'm going to talk about all that here. First off, just want to say if you caught my last episode, you know, I said something about doing a nostalgia piece over the weekend. Unfortunately, didn't get to it, but hopefully we'll have that to you tomorrow. But yeah, I mean, let's talk about Teledega and this racing out there. As I say, I think it was some great racing. A lot of fans did not agree with this. A lot of people did not agree with the half throttle fuel mileage saving uh, strategies that were going on out there. And uh, understandably so, I get this as well. Racing should be foot to the floor. Fastest car wins and everything else. But that's not the way it's working right now in NASCAR with the package that they have for this and with the new car. It's uh, something that they're having to do differently. And obviously, the whole pack at one time, all running half throttle out there. So doesn't provide the best uh, entertainment as far as what you would think. But still, some great racing out there. And, and again, this is what they got to deal with today. But I loved what some of the teams did because some of the teams took on a different strategy putting the foot to the floor, making them other guys burn up fuel to try to keep up with the situation and the pace that was going on. And nobody did that better all day than those Toyotas, uh, especially that last that last run there, getting a pit stop, all of them coming out nose to tail. I bet the Toyota execs were just excited as hell right there, thinking we're going to have this big run to the win. And then all this right here takes place, and uh, they had to hang their heads after that right there. But, man. Let's just talk about that wreck right there. Eric Jones, hard impact into the wall. And, uh, man, stuff that we do not want to see at any track, whether it be a short track, but especially on a super speedway like this. And uh, if you take a look at this right here and listen to this, you get a real idea of how hard of a hit this was. Now, following this incident, Eric was taken to the infield care center where he was treated and released and uh, did have some back pain, was further evaluated at the hospital later that evening where he was once again treated and released. And I'll say at the time of this taping right here, don't have any information about any injuries sustained, but uh, definitely a hard hit. And uh, our well wishes are right there with Eric for a speedy recovery for any injuries he did sustain. I know he's got to be super sore today. And I'm going to say this much. This is why I make it a point not to try to talk bad about any drivers out there. I will criticize some some things that drivers do, but uh, much respect for all the drivers out there because they do put life and limb out there for race and entertainment every weekend. And I'll say this much. I don't care if you're racing go-karts or late models or anything. If you're in a significant wreck, your body feels it the next day. And uh, this was a very significant wreck. Now, anyways, let's move on to the other guy who was involved in this incident right here. And obviously, that's Bubba Wallace. And I particularly want to pay attention to his post-crash interview. And uh, Regan Smith brought it up to him about the bumps. And obviously, he was talking about the bumps on the racetrack, as you can see here. But I do believe Bubba was taking it as in saying that he had bumped him out of the way and caused this. But um, the interesting part is Bubba said he's getting tired of getting caught up in everybody else's mess. And uh, this is a situation here where I got, I got to say... You were involved in this. There was there was a lot of racing incident that took place to make this happen, but yet Bubba was involved in the situation. And I think it's time to take some responsibility on something like that to uh, to acknowledge. Sorry about what happened, but uh, not the way it worked out. But the other big topic of the weekend was Ford. Everybody was looking forward to seeing what Ford could do here. Pressure on Ford to come out and perform, and uh, right out of the gate, did Michael McDowell sitting on the pole and leading a large portion of this race all the way down to the uh checkered flag pretty much but uh but the four is really strong rfk really strong brad keselowski out there running good the 17 good stewart haas cars they showed up ready to run so great rebound for fords out here and i don't think they disappointed anyone and um what i like about it is this manufacturer's race 
seems to be getting better as the year goes on. That's something you know that I try to keep up with. So pretty interesting and hopefully more continued improvement by all the camps out there. But yeah, Michael McDowell, so close to that win. Continued doing blocking for several, several laps. And I knew no way they're coming to the checkered flag without something happening. And sure enough, here it goes. And uh, Michael around. And then the big one happening right here, going to the checkered flag. And um, just just crazy incident. And what's ironic is Brad Keselowski was involved in this right here. And Brad, no stranger to a wild wreck coming to the finish at Talladega. As you can see right here, him and Carl Edwards, one of the wildest wrecks that ever happened right there. And one of the wildest finishes in a long time as well. But uh, a really hard hit for him. And I got to follow up with this little piece right here of Brad. I think this was at Daytona. But Brad had some comments about the blocking taking place on the restrictor plate tracks. And uh, take a listen. It a really fast Miller Lite Ford. And, uh, you know, Dave, I'm just not wrecking enough people. I need to wreck more people. So they'll stop throwing bad blocks. Um, and that's what's happening to me on the plate track. So, you know, everybody that's watching all them drivers out there throw another bad block. I mean, I'm just going to drive through you and wreck you. So look out and tell Dave. Now, it's very ironic that he mentioned Talladega in this interview right here. This was actually a few years later. But uh, but still, this was this was an on-track incident. Nothing deliberate, obviously. And uh, Brad, I know, would not go out there and just deliberately dump somebody like this, especially at those speeds. So, But, uh, again, one hell of a wreck at the end. I'm going to tell you the one guy who I was concerned for, as soon as I saw the incident, uh, I could tell there was a car on the side going down the wall, and that turned out to be Corey LaJoy. And uh, this is a scary incident for me right here. It's very reminiscent of something that happened at Charlotte Motor Speedway back in 92 in the uh, NASCAR Sportsman Series with Gary Batson. And as you can see, this was just a very, very scary wreck. And uh, unfortunately, Gary lost his life in this crash, and it's something that uh, anytime I see a car like that on its side, especially driver down like that with another car involved very scary because i was there that night i saw this firsthand and um i mean from right over top of it and it's something that's never left me so nothing that we want to see on the racetrack but thankfully all these guys coming out okay and uh but the race winner tyler reddick toyota's still getting it done so them executives still had to be happy at the end of the day but tyler reddick out there getting the win with that jordan brand on the side with Michael Jordan there. And uh, Fox let us know that Michael Jordan was there. There was a whole lot of interview of Michael Jordan following the race. Uh, more interviews with that than people that were in the race. So very interesting, but I get it. Michael Jordan hoping to attract more people to the sport. MJ obviously saying, man, I'm here. I love this and uh, excited to be there for a win. So I get where they were going with this. But man, did give Michael Jordan a lot of press time right there. But I'm going to tell you somebody that they didn't give press time to, and I was very upset with Fox for doing this, and that was B.J. McLeod. B.J. McLeod out there in a 78 car, unsponsored, just a black car, running up front with Martin Truex for the lead. I thought this was really exciting right there for him and uh, was hoping he could continue on through the day like that. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but yet, come on, man, in the booth, that's big news right there. That's a guy who needs TV time because that provides him bucks to get out there and continue running like this and... Uh, not that he needs it, just got $40 million, but still, sponsorship is key. And it would have been great to see them just promote him a little more right there. But uh, Which is going to bring me to my next point, and that was Saturday, an Xfinity race, because I felt the same way about this right here. There's two drivers that uh, I had the pleasure of being around a lot last year, and this was Joey Gase and Patrick Emerlin. Both of these guys having really good runs in this race. New sponsors on the side of the cars, and um, really no mention. Really no mention of them up until the very end when they're coming to the checker flag. And, of course, right here, Joey getting dumped. And Joey was on his way to a top five finish and uh, kind of looked like maybe second place finish right there, but did not happen. But, uh, man, give these guys TV time. Mention them. Mention their sponsors. Do all that because everybody else is getting mentioned out there if they got a bigger name. And these are the guys who need it more than anybody. And when they do something like this, Give them the accolades, and uh, unfortunately, did not happen. But again, a great finish to this race right here. Jesse Love getting his first win. Congratulations to him. Uh, this is something I'm going to touch more on throughout the year with that two car right there. And uh, some of the things that didn't happen to it last year that are happening this year, 
and the driver who should be worried about that. But uh, great finishes for Anthony Alfredo out there in third, uh, Leland Honeyman fourth, and uh, Brennan Poole fifth place finish. Also, Matthew Benedetto eighth, and Haley Deegan 12th place finish. So uh, I know her fans super excited about that. And uh, man, this brings me to one other female in racing. I'm going to close this out after this right here. But uh, this was Natalie Decker. And Natalie Decker was on the entry list for the Talladega race for Xfinity. But she put out this message saying that there was a problem with this. She was on the list, but uh, unfortunately, her sponsor was not approved in time for the race. So she was not going to be there. And this is wild because this is reminiscent of uh, not that long ago where she had the same situation happen where she had diesel beverages, which is a hemp-based beverage that uh, she wanted on the side of the car. And the process of being approved by NASCAR did not happen in time. And uh, NASCAR has a very strict policy on any hemp-based stuff like that to be approved. So it didn't happen. So she lost her sponsorship for that race and was pulled from the car. She was driving for BJ McLeod in number five. And interestingly enough, she was replaced by Patrick Emerling in that car, who I just referred to about his run. And Patrick, a great short track racer. I'm going to be doing more about him this year with a short track and modified racing. But uh, it was interesting that Patrick got out there in a car that had no sponsor either. But uh, still hoping Natalie can get out there and do some more racing this year. And uh, man, I just, I, like I say, I don't want to talk bad about any drivers. I respect them all and uh, love their work that they do to get there. But anyways... Let me know what you think about this race. And did you enjoy the racing? Uh, you know, say the fans, fans in the stands loved it. There's fans that I saw commenting on this. This was their first race they went to and they thought it was great. They didn't even see that nobody was not full throttle or anything like that. And hopefully a lot of new fans out of this. But let me know what you think about this. And if you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button down there. Let's talk racing. And uh, man, more coming to you this week. But anyways, hope you're off to a great week. And as always... We'll see you at the checkered flag.